I wonder if perhaps the full emotion of this moment for them, for Aldrin and Armstrong, might not come sometime much later after they have returned to Earth, after they have gone through the quarantine period, after they have returned to Houston, the plaudits are all past them. And uh, Neil's wife says, uh, hey, go out and empty the garbage, will you? And he goes out at night, and as he's dropping <laughs> the garbage into the can, he looks up in the heavens, and there's that big, beautiful moon <laughs> shining down on it. Maybe then it might hit him. What am I doing dropping garbage? I've been there. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody's got to empty the garbage. <laughs> Sitting here looking at that picture and that desert scene and all, you know. Seems to me a jeep should come sailing across now saying, get out of here. You're in a classified area or something, you know. Yeah. Once again, the two men are back in the lunar module. The hatch has been sealed. The cabin has been repressurized. But we're out of voice contact. There seems to be a breakup of signal between astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin and mission control. Telemetry data indicates the cabin pressure is back up to about normal, almost five pounds per square inch. Lamb's systems look good. Crewman should now be transferring back to uh, Tranquility Base's environmental control system, and later we'll switch to uh, to the vehicle's communication system. We estimate it'll be another 10 to 15 minutes before they're on the LAM communication system. And if we have learned anything in the past from uh, the way Armstrong and Aldrin uh, uh, conduct their activities, they won't be talking too much while they are in this busy period of switching from their portable life support system to the, and getting the Eagle uh, environment control system functioning. Lunar module flyers Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin are back in the limb. After their walk on the surface of the moon, the LEM hatch has been sealed. The cabin has been repressurized. Well, we can certainly say that uh, the EVA, the extravehicular activity, has ended. They spent two hours, 13 minutes, 12 seconds on the surface of the moon, are back in Eagle, and are back relying on Eagle's systems to keep them alive. In the background, a bit of static from mission control as ground controllers here wait for the men to move on to the communications system and the limb itself rather than in the portable life support and system. And a replica of the American flag on the lunar surface is now being erected here in the control center. That word from mission control. I saw that flag in the corner over there a while ago. I was wondering about that. And a replica of the plaque on Tranquility Base has been hung on the wall. All together, inside and outside their moonship, Armstrong and Aldrin spent nearly a day in this strange, literally unearthly place. They did what they came to do. Apollo 11 is over. The men are on the ocean. We've had word from Mike Collins inside the spacecraft. He says the crew is excellent. The crew is excellent. 
The helicopter designated as the retrieval helicopter is equipped with uh, biological isolation garments for the swimmers who will go to the uh, capsule and uh, throw the garments inside the capsule where the astronauts will put them on. They'll hoist the operator protective garment and two seven-man life rafts and decontamination dispensers and additional scuba tanks for the swim team, all part of the uh, prime recovery helicopter, Recovery One. We will continue to monitor for any conversation between the spacecraft and recovery forces, but we will not initiate a call from now on to the spacecraft from the control center. Mission Control Houston has now stepped out of the picture, and it is now up to the recovery forces out in the Pacific. They are in control of the Apollo operation from now on. We might add it, everything is running right on schedule, so to speak, here, about where they thought it would be in the timeline after landing as the whole mission has gone. And I don't know, you know, really, with the one step remaining uh, to get the astronauts uh, safely on board the aircraft carrier Hornet, that maybe we should stop, pause, and realize that man has been to the moon and returned safely, that President John F. Kennedy's uh, goal has been met and in this decade. You know, going back to the early days of Mercury, uh, flash distances were so far apart uh, from where they were, and to think that man has come a quarter of a million miles through space and been able to land within 15 miles of a courier is uh, almost unbelievable within itself. And of course, you have to also take into consideration that possibly the carrier was off uh, the target. But the helicopters were there immediately. They were never uh, out of sight of the spacecraft. The helicopter recovery units were, were there, and the frogmen were in the water almost immediately, uh, getting the flotation collar around uh, while waiting for the Hornet to draw up alongside. So that's Lieutenant Clancy Handelberg is there outside the spacecraft in his raft. They will open the hatch, and Handelberg will throw the three isolation garments inside the spacecraft, which the astronauts will don before emerging and uh, being taken back to the carrier. Then, of course, aboard the Hornet, they will go into a portable uh, quarantine unit, sort of a house trailer arrangement. They're on the carrier and will remain there until that house trailer can uh, return them to uh, Houston Control, or Houston... Uh, Lunar Recovery Laboratory. There are, to set the scene for you, there are three helicopters hovering over the spacecraft. Uh, it's just uh, past dawn slightly there in the recovery area. The uh, aircraft carrier Hornet is now approximately four miles away and is closing uh, within range here uh, to bring the astronauts aboard shortly. Full rescue procedures now underway. Two of the uh, frog, or two of these spacemen are out of their capsule. is a little rough here three to six foot waves was the forecast and as we look at the spacecraft bobbing in the water it's easy to tell that uh, the seas are at least that winds about 18 knots the winds strong enough in fact that they pull the spacecraft over upon landing with its uh, sharp end down and for a few minutes there until it was righted by the flotation balloons there was a second loss of communication the aircraft carriers, uh, aircraft carrier moving in closely now with the helicopters overhead. Lieutenant Hadelberg spraying the hatchway on the spacecraft now. Uh, All three of them now in the uh, in the raft, right alongside the space capsule, a hundred feet away at the end of a tether, and with an anchor to stabilize it, is another raft with the frogmen who had uh, installed the flotation uh, collar.
Well, the three astronauts and the big man, the uh, man who tossed them their biological isolation garments, Lieutenant Clancy Hadelberg, all four men in the raft, uh, decontaminating each other, scrubbing each other down with the disinfectant, and it uh, could be a rather comical uh, sight, and I should imagine that they will have to be very careful that they don't flip that raft over. We had a flip over on Apollo 9, and uh, they're going to be quite agile there uh, in getting themselves scrubbed down without uh, and still maintaining their, uh, their balance. Once the decontamination process has been completed, then the astronauts will be uh, raised into the helicopter while the big man...